Hey guys, so today we're gonna find out whether or not DW home candles still suck. So yes, if you watched my Instagram, TikTok, or YouTube short, then you know I posted a little haul video of us going into Marshalls and hauling a few DW home candles. This is one of the questions that I get the most or whether or not DW home candles are good or whether or not Goose Creek candles are good. And DW home, I bought a few of them maybe like 10 years ago and they were just absolutely trash. I mean, they would not burn worth a darn. I mean, it was just completely tunneled down the middle, absolutely no fragrance and of what fragrance you could get on top of it. It, it was just like this cheap plasticky waxy fragrance and it was just absolutely awful and like it, it was such a terrible experience that I wrote off DW Home Candles forever even though they are so present in so many TJ Maxx Marshall stores you see them all the time they turn out candles like crazy and they have really 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 cute packaging I think they, the DW actually stands for decor wear and so I guess they're kind of like a decor company and kind of like depending on the performance of these it's kind of like maybe they should stick to decor rather than making candles but we will get into all the nitty gritty today. So yes, uh, we went to Marshall's, we picked up two candles. They have the cutest candles, like, oh my God, they really nailed it with those. They have like these frappe coffee cup, like domed lid candles that are just absolutely cute with the most enticing fragrances, but it's just knowing that their performance is really questionable. It's just such a like risk to go in and buy the candles for an actual home fragrance experience. If you're simply looking for an aesthetic decor piece, then maybe DW Home would be good for you. But as for candles, we'll get into the real details right now. So the two candles we have are Rose Ganache from the DW Home Essence Collection. Uh, what does this say? Essential fragrances for everyday living. So I did not know that Rose Ganache was an essential fragrance that you need for everyday living, but there it is. Uh, this was $9.99 for a two wick. As you can see, I have burned it and that's what that looks like right there. Uh, and this one is a 15 ounce candle. These are hand poured in Vietnam. So if you watched my Kirkland's candle review, you know that oftentimes the Vietnam candles are a kiss of death. So that was that right there. And then we also have Rainbow Catacorn, just so cute. Really speaks to my limited to justice like inner girl child. Uh, and that's what that looks like. Look at that absolutely juicy, glittery jar on there. This one was also $9.99, despite it being a single wick and being 8.5 ounces. You can see I've pretty much like burned down to the half of that one, as you can see it right there. Um, and these both came with white lids. They're like pretty nice, like... I guess metal tin type of lids. They don't they don't feel super cheap or anything, so uh, we're good to go there. So those were the two fragrances. Let's go into Rose Ganache. We'll do Rainbow Catacorn and then do my finishing thoughts. So, so the first one, the notes on Rose Ganache read sweet and rose petals accented by hints of white floral jasmine, ambered caramel, and soft vanilla woods. This one I've gotten many suggestions for because it's a similar fragrance to Pink Petal Tea Cake from Bath and Body Works, which is one of my favorite fragrances. It's definitely in the same fragrance family, but it is by no means a dupe of Pink Petal Tea Cake. I think Pink Petal Tea Cake is a little bit more sweet, juicy, confectionery. This one has a little other things going on. You get like a sort of more like a mature floral rose perfume blend that is definitely like not just rose. I do get that sort of jasmine in there as well. And for whatever reason, when you go to burn this one, there's a rather noticeable mintiness, which is kind of strange. It gives it like a coolness. And then there's a... Slight vanilla, slightly sweetened by caramel presence right at the end. But something about the way the notes interact, it kind of smells plasticky and that definitely translates when you're burning it as well. So it's kind of like a sweetened vanilla laced floral fragrance. Uh, if you're familiar with like floral candy from Yankee Candle, like a vibe like that. Uh, it's not quite as sweet, confectionery sweet, like candy, cake-ish as Pink Petal Tea Cake, but a similar, I guess, feel in the sense that it's a like rose floral plus sweet-ish gourmand fragrance. So the fragrance is all right and I appreciate that it's unique, but it's, I don't think it's as exquisite as Pink Petal Tea Cake is. So that's what the fragrance smells like. As for the throw and the burn and the performance on it, I have burned this one like four or five times at this point. That's what that looks like. Uh, these take a while to pull out. I wanna say the first burn at least took like a good, 
four to five hours to pull out so they're two wicks and so it tends tends to do a lot of hang up on the side but the improvement with this at least was that it didn't do the just awful horrible tunneling down the middle uh stuff that the old dw home candles did so this one actually does pull out it's just it won't pull out as fast as a bbw candle you have to give it uh quite a few hours to get it to pull out completely uh i didn't get any soap for the first one or two or third burns but by fourth and fifth burn it seems like when it gets to the mid-range point uh, it does tend to soot quite a bit more. It's not quite as sooty as like a Bath and Body Works candle. And I feel like if you trim it short enough, you can kind of combat the sooting. But there was noticeable sooting at the mid-range point. So that was that right there. As for the throw, this one was rather light, quite light. Um, I, I could I really couldn't smell it in this open concept area whatsoever. Believe it or not, the single wick rainbow catacorn was actually outperforming this one. I mean, not by a whole lot because this was a single wick candle, but I could notice this more than I could the rose ganache when it was in the open concept area. So I would say in a living room, no more than a one to a two, uh, barely noticeable. As for in my smaller like office bedroom areas, it was definitely more noticeable. I would say a good four to a five. It wasn't like overwhelmingly strong, but I could still smell it. It was lingering in the air and it was rather nice. I actually uh, paired both rose ganache and rainbow catacorn together and the strawberry mixing off of the rose was actually a really nice blend that I actually gave it more of a pink petal tea cake experience than rose ganache by itself. And so it was like medium to satisfactory in a smaller bedroom. So while this wasn't great in an open concept area, if you enjoy the fragrance, there's a good chance that you could actually smell it in a smaller bedroom. And it was totally satisfactory and totally fine for a smaller bedroom size. Um, and it is two wicks, uh, a big, what is this, 15 ounce candle. Um, and it did give like more throw than like a lot of Yankee candles do, or even some of my four wick homeworks that are much more expensive and 18 ounces with four wicks. Uh, there's some homework candles that I can't smell in here and I really can't smell in my bedroom either. So like at least this one performed better than a Yankee and also better than a Homeworks, but not necessarily as good as a Bath & Body Works. So for $10, if you really enjoy the fragrance, um, it, it didn't tunnel and I could still smell it in a smaller bedroom. So this one's actually decent for a smaller bedroom, but once again, not for an open concept area. So that was the Rose Ganache right there. The next one we have is Rainbow Catacorn right here. This one is just, oh my God, I just like even though my nieces are too young to be burning candles by any means, I just kind of want to like just place this in their bedroom and just something about it is just, even though it's like obviously a corporate consumerist capitalist item that is made for sale, there's something, I don't know, innocent about this that is just like takes me back to like, I don't know, playing, playing with my nieces and just like having fun with our imaginations and just like, you know, having a good, innocent, childlike time. Uh, and I just, just want to like place it in her bedroom for whatever reason, uh, just because, I don't know, it's just very much like that vibe. So I do enjoy that. Uh, so what does a rainbow catacorn smell like? The notes on this one read sweet strawberry fruit in a white sugar puree drizzled over all butter biscuits and fluffy whips of smooth vanilla cream. How enticing is that? Uh, so yeah, this one, it kind of smells a lot like Bath and Body Works' strawberry pound cake, but like just a different take on it. I would say the strawberry jam is the most strongest on this and it's almost like that kind of really like candied artificial strawberry jam that kind of smells like Joller, jolly rancherish almost has like a slight watermelon vibe to it as well these strawberry jams let a lot more i would say candied and artificial than maybe even the bath and body works one is and there is a hint of a vanilla mixed in there but it's nowhere near as like strongly gourmand or even buttery as strawberry pound cake from bath and body works is despite it saying it's all butter biscuits yeah there's like a slight cakiness in the background but not as cakey as bath and body works strawberry pound cake so it, it was decent it's kind of like a run-of-the-mill strawberry gourmand fragrance and that's what that smelled like as for the performance on this one it is a single wake so this one took like I think at least eight hours to pull out the first time around and it still wasn't completely pulled out um and like a similar five to six hour range on all subsequent burns um as you can see it does like have quite a bit of build up and schmutz on the side that it doesn't quite pull out all the way uh but still good enough and usually like when you get down to the bottom or the end of this candle that build up tends to kind of melt down on the sides as well so there was that uh so as for the throw and performance on this one um at least it didn't like completely tunnel down the middle so we're good to go there with single weight candles i don't expect them to pull out in like an hour or two hours 
obviously eight hours is a really long time, but you can maybe like tin foil this or if an alumalid, I don't know if an alumalid would fit on this, but you might be able to like finagle something on top of it. Uh, so it's kind of expected for a single wick candle. I don't expect them to pull out very fast. Uh, as for the throw, this was not very noticeable as well. Uh, it was like maybe a two to a three in this open concept area, but just hovered in like this area. It was like literally where that candle is burning, but it didn't really travel anywhere past this immediate area. But I could actually surprisingly smell it more than the rose ganache when I walked into the room, strangely. When you put it into a smaller bedroom, once again, just hovers in the very three to four, like light to slightly medium range. So definitely not a strong, like room filling experience by any mean, but you definitely do notice that there's something sweet and cutesy going on in the background. I think this one, at least in the single wick format, is just more so truly like just a decor piece and like you kind of want to decorate with them and it has a very aesthetic Instagram TikTok vibe to it, but not so much like I am here for like balls to the walls, choke me out, like completely run me out of house fragrance and experience, not at all like that basically on both candles. So I feel like DW Home is maybe more, once again, like a decor company or aesthetic company, and the candle is very much secondary. I really don't get like high performance fragrance from either of these fragrances, uh, but like you have to admit, like they are rather cute or very like aesthetic and like, I guess good for decor. But yeah, I have to say the, in conclusion, the performance wasn't as terrible as it was 10 years ago. Uh, despite them being made in Vietnam, at least the wick issues seem to have been corrected. They, at least these two didn't tunnel straight down the middle, so we're good to go there. Some sooting, but not excessive. And the fragrance wasn't completely unscented like the previous ones were. So at least an improvement there. I feel like the decor and the aesthetic is nice. So once again, I think this is more just a casual, I'm not a, you know, candle collector or a candle fanatic that needs a massive fragrance, but for the casual consumer, it looks cute. It performs decently enough and it gives enough of a background fragrance with a huge variety of fragrances and design styles that now I totally understand why they still remain, I guess, su supposedly successful and they still continue to be in stores because all things considered, I think for the casual consumer who might just be walking through Marshalls or TJ Maxx, they, they might not be like us in the candle community who are really looking for just like 10 out of 10 amazing strong performance and might prioritize just a gift giving experience or an aesthetic experience over high performance fragrance. So that is my conclusion and thoughts on DW Home Candles. The verdict, not as terrible as I thought they would. My expectations were very, very, very low. Um, so I would say they, I guess they don't necessarily suck, but I think you have to sort of manage your expectations or who the demographic or customer is when sort of judging these fragrances. Uh, having burned these two, I wouldn't write them off completely. Like if I saw something that was in a really cute jar and I really fell in love with the fragrance, for 10 bucks, I don't think that's really a bad deal. I mean, even like just the design and the research and the actual man hours and shipping them out to, you know, make these and design them and figure out all the collections, uh, like that is a very, very, very reasonable price. And for whatever reason, if the candle doesn't perform necessarily up to par, I could probably once again put on a candle warmer or a candle lamp and get some uh, fragrance out of it that way as well. So I think it's kind of... I guess you have to think of the perspective or point of view from who's buying this. So that is pretty much my thoughts on DW Home Candles. Uh, thanks so much for watching. Let me know your experience down below. Obviously, I only burned two candles, not like their entire lineup. But uh, it actually, I came out with a more positive outlook on them than I started. So I guess it's a thumbs up for them. So thanks so much. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.